Let's hear it for entirely appropriate intro music. (laughs) Knitted cardigan, I know what he needs. Turn it up, pump the bass. Let's let this guy remember what every day of his life is definitely like. It's just like the inside of the car I definitely own. I drive with the license I definitely have because I'm definitely an adult man. Definitely is code for not. Uh, hello everyone, welcome <laughs> to me, <laughs> you've been here for ages, welcome to my portion. Uh, my name's Mark, I don't own any tattoos, I'm not an owner of a tattoo, but I wish that I had one tattoo, just a big screaming eagle on my chest, just all over my chest, just to compensate for everything else. <laughs> and it would like cover me, and then like on the back it would just say like, see front. Because <laughs> this is the important thing. Don't forget. And then I'd get like, like it would be fun to get a girl to come back to my room and then I'd like rip off my shirt and be like, what's up baby, do you like this? And then she'd be like, I'm confused by that because you got me back here with like what you are and now that is baffling <laughs> and frankly scary it's like, what don't you get it girl because I'm like a well rounded individual because I've got it all now right because I'm tough and then everything else it's not how you become a well rounded person you can't just live your life in one extreme and then tattoo the other extreme on your chest can't be some big muscly guy taking a girl home from the gym being like, What's up, baby? You like my fucking book tattoo? Yeah! Let's do this! What's wrong? Who are you calling? Uh, what number has only three digits? What's happening? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, definitely. Definitely call them. The best tattoo in the history of humankind, in my opinion, belongs to a wrestler from the 90s named Bam Bam Bigelow. That was pathetic. That is where the state of Bam Bam Bigelow fans is at right now. Woo! Yeah, I'm tired of him. Um, half the people in the back were like, nah, he's not worth it. He is worth it. He's an amazing figure in the history of wrestling. He's one of the guys that you don't automatically associate with wrestling. Like, amid all of these muscly goliaths, he was one of the big, like, short, fat guys who's just like, how am I a wrestler? Ah, I fucking make my own rules. Barbed wire, barbed wire. Ah! He's a maniac, right? He was the best. For any kid with a body issue, he was the best. If he can do it, I can do it. So, Van Den Bigelow's tattoo was, he was completely bald, and he had flames tattooed where the hair had once been. Oh, perfect. But the strange thing was that the flames followed a receding hairline. Like he was thinking to himself, oh man, I really want flame hair. But at my age, no one's gonna believe I can grow a full head of flame hair. Think, bam, bam, think. Grow a fucking widow's peak. Ah! Part one, part one! So, that was Bam Bam Bigelow. And uh, so he, he had flame hair. His uniform was a flaming onesie. Okay? And he died in a fire. Oh no! Oh no! This is one of God's rare instances of hilarity. <laughs> Guy's running into God's room. Like, What's going on, man? He's like, I don't know, man. I thought it'd be hilarious. This is not funny. I'm just trying to shit out. It's new material, man. <laughs> I don't know. I can't undo it. That's the one power I don't have. Oh, all the things I wish I could undo. I killed so many people with that flood, man. I went nuts. <laughs> Some of you might not be aware that God is Louis Armstrong. <laughs> he always has been. He always has been. He briefly reincarnated himself a second time as Louis Armstrong. That's the Louis Armstrong we know. 
And then he was like, you gotta, I'm, I'm not gonna crucify, he didn't want to crucify himself again. He's like, no nah, man, I'm cool, I'll just die old age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he ever played the trumpet, but he might as well. Uh, if I ever had a head tattoo, here's how I do it. And it would be a life decision. Like, a, a life decision that was predicting my chosen mode of death, all right? Here's what I do. Shave my hair, tattoo property of Area 51 on the back of my head. In very, in very formal typeface. And then grow my hair back in and just live my life. <laughs> and then when I'm ready to just cash it all in, I've lived a good life, got some memories, it's all downhill from here, I go to a barber shop. I pick a barber shop where there's like a barber whose life I wanted to ruin. Okay? That's part of it. Like a barber who one time I was like, just a trim, and he's like, I know what's right, and be like, I'll get you in 40 years. Okay, that kind of guy. I'd sit in his chair and say, shave it all off, man. And as he was shaving it, I'd wait. I'd wait until he'd shaved just enough and started to slow down and was reading what was in front of him. Give him a couple seconds and then turn around and go, something the matter, barber. <laughs> And then I just grab his jar full of blue scissor liquid and drink it right in front of him, and then fucking die on the ground. And just force him to choose what he's gonna do. Does he call the cops, or is that gonna get him in trouble with the government? Does he just bury me and tell no one? And that's how I would ruin a barber's life. Who knows? Barbers are horrible people. So, I, I did something, I'm from Halifax, I did something fun in Halifax a couple years ago. I got to host the Atlantic Film Festival, and the organizers asked me to do two things. I was supposed to go on before the first movie and like warm the audience up, tell jokes, and tell them about that night's big party, which was headlined by 80s hair metal band from Toronto, Helix. Okay? And I said, repeat, the last part of that sentence. <laughs> I said, the headliner is Helix. I said, now clarify to me what you think headliner means. <laughs> That's the big bend. All right, because I'm going to tell people that Helix is playing, and if no one goes to this party, it's not because of the way I said that. <laughs> it's because of the content of what I said. Helix, okay. So, I decided I would combine my jobs and tell jokes about Helix. <laughs> what am I ever going to get that chance again? Was Brian Fulmer going to invite me to his house? That's his name. All right. So I'm standing at the venue, waiting to go on, and I'm watching the audience filter into their seats, and then among the audience, I see three men in their 60s with platinum blonde permed hair down to their waists and faces that look like they've been sandblasted by cocaine. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Helix is here. So I'm walking towards the podium, because that's where the mic is, and I'm thinking, I can't tell Helix jokes in front of Helix. And then the other side of my brain is thinking, I ain't got no other jokes! <laughs> so I stand there, and not looking at this side of the room at all, because that's where they are, I say to this side of the room, the party tonight is headlined by none other than Helix. If you're like me, hearing that makes you say, oh my god, who is Helix? <laughs> I don't know if this side of the room laughed, because I was too afraid to look. Because I felt like if I did, I was going to be getting a death stare by three men my father's age, just muttering, I'm going to get you after the show, motherfucker. Who wants to do a line off my pager? Nah! Relax! So technology never dies! So, and here's the thing. If you think I'm mean for making fun of how obscure Helix is, consider this. When I was researching who Helix was for the show, because I genuinely didn't know, I went on YouTube and looked up their big hit from the 80s, Rock You. What do we want? Rock! 
What are we gonna do? Rock you. That's the entire song for five minutes. The 80s were a simpler time, okay? Here's the music video. Helix is in a chain gang for like 10 seconds. They're like working in the chain gang and then 10 seconds in they're like, I'm bored, break out of the chain gang because it's so easy when you're Helix. The rest of the video is them dancing around a bonfire with topless women for like four minutes. And these women are straight up topless. Not like, mm, cute, maybe are they topless. Like, like there are breasts just like, ah, like, here's the song for you. And for four minutes on YouTube, topless women dancing around. And I know about YouTube's strict censorship policy, so I'm wondering, how did this video slip through the cracks? Oh, no one has ever searched for this video. <laughs> That's the loophole! All you have to do is be irrelevant. So! I made these jokes with a clear conscience. Right? Because what's he doing on the ground if I'm not supposed to kick him? Anyway, so, I watched the... Is that why he's there? So, I watched the film, and then as soon as it's done, I sneak out the side. Because I don't want to run into anyone. Well, immediately, once I get outside, I run into this blonde woman bump into her and say, sorry. She turns around, and she is Helix. <laughs> it's like a moment in a David Lynch movie where some beautiful southern belle is like, pardon me, I'm just a hideous man! <laughs> yeah, I love it! That moment. And I started going like this. And he just looked at me and went, oh my god, you're the host, man! Come take a picture, man! Oh, this is great! And it was like my words hadn't been processed in his brain as insults. And I just stared him in the eyes and thought to myself, oh, thank you again, cocaine. Holy <laughs> shit. You do good work. <laughs> and just for the sake of truth in comedy, I should say that later that night the party was bullshit. And then Helix went on. And they were fucking amazing. <laughs> they were so good! Uh, still got it. Still got it. I mean, now they have it. Now they have it. They've learned it. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna tell you guys one more story. And this is a, this is a meaner story. It's not mean. It's a story. There's a person with Down Syndrome in this story. He's not the butt of the joke. He's, he sort of is. Not a big deal. Didn't need to clear this up up front. I'm making things worse. <laughs> At a certain point in the story, don't be surprised. <laughs> so, I'm getting a ride with this cabbie through like an industrial part of Toronto. And I should say like the cabbie is not the one with Down Syndrome. <laughs> oh, that would be the worst. And then we crash, and I'm at the hospital, and the doctor's like, why'd you get in that cab? I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I should've known something was wrong when he spelled it crab. I don't know. Uh, uh, why would I get on a tricycle with the sign crab stuck to it? Uh, uh, no. This is not that kind of story. The story is actually about the saddest thing a cabbie ever told me. Driving through an industrial part of Toronto, it's midnight. And he's this old Greek man, and he's saying, he moved here from he moved here from Greece uh, 30 years ago. Hates it. Doesn't like it here, but can't go home. I said, why not? He's got kids, he's got grandkids, he can't afford to start over. And then he says, I'm like a lion in a cage here. A lion in a cage. Do you know what I mean? And I said, uh, <laughs> in was at the zoo or something. So. <laughs> Saw the lines. Felt like they'd prefer to be this way. <laughs> Small cage. Probably not Greece per se, but maybe Africa for the lions. Yeah, but for you, Greece. Yeah. <laughs> We're having this really crazy real moment. We're at the stoplight, and then all of a sudden, from around the corner, driving down the middle of the road, comes a guy in a wheelchair with Down syndrome, laughing maniacally, and wearing a birthday hat. He's driving down the middle of the road, he just 
goes in front of our cab, and then turns and goes beside our cab, and then he's gone. <laughs> so here's this. Lion in a cage. Lion in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> Never existed. <laughs> and I've got one job here, in my mind. I am listening to a sad story, and I'm being a good human being who gives undivided attention to people's sad life stories. And it is difficult. Because every fiber of my being wants to say, I'm very sorry to interrupt you, sir. Did you see that? <laughs> and I know this is probably going to cost me extra, but could you follow that man? <laughs> or alternatively, do you think you could drive in the opposite direction of where he's coming from, just so we can see if there's more. <laughs> what is happening? That's what I'm getting at. But instead, I said, Sorry, you said something about a lion in a cage? And it felt like I was being tested by some sort of God. Because I was telling myself, I'm a good person, I'm giving this man my undivided attention. And then God was saying, oh yeah? <laughs> we'll see how good a person you are when I try to distract you with literally everything. <laughs> I know none of those elements individually are funny, but at a certain point, the sheer accumulation of elements becomes uncontrollable. Midnight. Industrial part of Toronto, middle of the road, wheelchair, Down syndrome, maniacal laughter, birthday hat! What? Whose birthday was it? Was it his birthday? How? Okay, listen. I know people with Down syndrome, okay? We're not like good friends, but I know some people with Down syndrome. And they have caretakers with them all the time. How did this guy escape? Was he at his own birthday party? And his caretaker was like, oh, fine, I guess I'll have one glass of champagne. And he was like, this is Kevin's chance! Wow! We'll see you at the mill! And then that's what we to run. And no disrespect to this cabbie, because I understand, like, his life is sad. But he saw this guy and was literally unfazed. <laughs> and I think at a certain point you have to take ownership over your sad life and admit that if you're seeing spectacles like this every day and you're totally unfazed by them, you are the problem. <laughs> yes! Yeah. Fuck you, Kevin! So in conclusion, butcher, uh, barbers, cabbies, and helix. <laughs> Fuck them all, right? <laughs> uh, thanks very much, everyone.